Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the New Glenn rocket. So I modeled the New Glenn in Blender. I had previously made the BE-4 for the Vulcan rocket, so I decided to go ahead and make uh, this rocket right here. I kept it fairly simple as far as the legs are concerned. I don't, I don't think this is how they do the legs, to be honest. Uh, but I did it the way, uh, unfortunately I can't make it um, display slower in the VAB, but uh, yeah, uh, once we're outside, you'll be able to see. And uh, there are some other flaws at the moment, including uh, the texture is not quite matching on that side, even though they match on this side. It's weird. I don't know why that happened. Anyway, but because the engines are bundled in the Vulcan rocket pack, I, I, the way I'm going to distribute this is I'm going to just put all my real rockets together in one mod now. So... The download in the video description right now is going to be edb real rockets version 0.6, and it will include the following rockets Atlas V, GSLV Mark III, Launcher 1, Long March 3, New Glenn, Pegasus, Starship, and Vulcan. So, those eight, and if you had previously downloaded any of those, you should uh, delete those from the ED mods folder and just use the version that is in the video description right now. Improvements have been made. And um, anything... Oh, the reason why you have to delete the old versions... Uh, from here on out, it'll just be an overwrite. But the reason you have to delete the old versions is because I took the RO configurations out of the individual folders and made a new RO config folder in EDB mods. So... That way, if you're not using Realism Overhaul, you can just delete that RO config folder so it won't create any conflicts. Otherwise, if you overwrote, instead of deleting the original mod folders for those eight rockets, you would have two different copies of the RO configs. Okay? So anyway, so you can get this rocket, and I'll show you how to put it together. Uh, the only new engine, though, is... Um, oops, that's the second stage that I took. Uh, it's sort of seamless, so I probably ought to add some seams to it. Uh, this is the BE-3U, and there you go. They said it had four ignitions. I gave it five, and probably rotate that one just to make it look like that. Anyway, uh, so how to put it together? Well, let's get a new thing. And you notice I didn't include fins, so those will be with B9 procedurals. As usual, I'll I'll think about working on fins at some point, but fins are annoying. So here we go. Maybe in update 0 0.7, 0 0.7 or something. All right, uh, let's get a payload first. And they said that the payload capacity was 45 tons. I don't know if that's with reusability or not. Technically, their uh, biggest payload adapter is only rated for 37.2 tons. We've got the payload uh, user's guide, so it doesn't have all the numbers about the rocket, not as much as Atlas V did, which irritates me, but um, Atlas V's user's guide was very nice and detailed, but I'll take what I can get. So that's 41.6 tons, and can add some more roundness. And that's near enough to 45 tons right there. Okay, so that's our test mass with Avgas. And once again, searching for New Glenn, we have these five parts. Uh, there is another uh, New Glenn rocket uh, from Super Penguin, and, but that's more stock alike. So that's why I decided to make this version. Here's the upper stage. The burn times are based on the, the timing. They have a launch timing in the payload user's guide, so I just went with that and assumed that that's how much fuel we had, and it works out pretty well. So this stage actually lasts for 10 minutes. Well, we have to have the BE-3s on. So uh, this is the tank, BE-3Us, and we'll get one there and just rotate that one. You don't need to rotate it, but that's just for the heck of it. I don't know what kind of RCS they really use, so I put hydrazine, so it, the hydrazine RCS works. That's one improvement to the Atlas rocket as well. I put the little, it's the same thruster ports. I just put the same ones on all the rockets because I have no idea how they look. Anyway, uh, fairings. It could be that the fairings are the other way. Um, 
in other words, uh, the nodes should be here and here. Somebody can tell me about that. Okay, so then we have the stage, and we need to make sure that the engines are not where the second stage couples. And then we have 10 minutes of burn time in 15 seconds. And that's way less than the volume of the tank. If you put a procedural tank right next to it, uh, that procedural tank would have much more volume than this does. So it's pretty good. Okay, so the 15 seconds, uh, it, it's complicated. Uh, there's a GTO burn that's more than 10 minutes. And that's probably, be uh, it ends up being, I think, 11 minutes and 20 seconds. But I think the engine throttles down in that case, so... Oh, so it gives you some leftover for deorbiting the stage. Okay, and first stage tank. It goes on directly. The inner stage is part of the first stage. That's uh, because it comes back down, right? So I wanted just to make it one piece so that there's no complications with that. Uh, the, there's a control core in here. Uh, there's electric charge and everything. There's a small antenna. Um, watch out though, you'll probably need a good satellite connection if you're using comms. And again, the legs lower like that. In fact, we'll keep them down. It'll just stand so we can verify that it stands properly. And if we lift it up, there are nodes in here for the BE4. But the BE4 doesn't come in the New Glenn folder. This is why I'm distributing all the rockets together. It comes in the Vulcan folder. So uh, Now, they look really small. They're size to the Vulcan rocket. But I don't know, maybe on the new Glen, they have a lot larger nozzle or a different, differently shaped nozzle. I don't know, because they look really small here. But they're down there, seven of them, and they have their own individual nodes. So then we just need to work on staging. The BE4s have generous throttling, maybe a little bit more generous than it really has. The BE3Us are supposed to throttle to 88%, so not very much, considering that the BE3s, the surface ones, throttle pretty well. So fin-wise, just for reference, um, we'll want the all-moving space plane wings, and we want it snapped, four of them, and what you want to do with the B9 procedural wings to get it looking right is... A um, little bit less length and tip like that. They actually tilt, I mean, this is roughly speaking. I would still need to look at a picture to get it perfect. But we want to match colors with that New Glenn look. And the material should be uniform. The surface should be uniform. And it should just be white. So no saturation. And we'll match the brightness with the body. More or less. And then you'll see the leading edge and trailing edge. That's what we match to the color. So uniform again. And full opacity. But this time we're looking for the right hue. Right around there, 0.66 looks good. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. So the only other thing is that the shape is actually uh, triangular. The shape of the whole thing is triangular, but we can't really do that, I don't think. Now, the main wings are, I don't think they actuate. It's up to you whether you want them actuating or not. Probably we don't want them actuating, but it's the same thing. So space plane, it's sort of like that. But again, I would probably go with uh, image. Let me, let me find an image. So actually, it looks like these fins are in line with the others. And they're after the words new cleanse. So they're like that. And the top of this wing, it's not as big as I thought, and it's shifted down. Um, top's a little bit past the B in blue. 
Okay, and uh, once again, triangular edges, and that's good enough for me for now. You can make the edges bigger, but then the color will extend further. In other words, uh, you can make it the right shape, but then you'll get blue on more of the surface, so it won't look quite right. Okay, so that's what we're going to go with for now. And I'll call this new Glen now. And we'll see how it works. Okay, so this is how it looks right now. I might, those fins are probably a little bit too big. Oh, this teth is there somehow. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, let me adjust those first. Okay, here we are. We are standing fairly well on our foot pads. No problems there. Okay, so we'll just see if we can get 45 tons to orbit. Uh, reserving, we'll try and reserve some fuel in the first stage and see. I'll try and work out the math. Uh, taking a look at it, we've got 5,200 meters per second in the upper stage, all told. The thrust weight ratio is horrid though, 0.51. Uh, it's one of those things. It's GTO optimized. Okay, so throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. And once we get enough thrust weight ratio, it'll already be going up. Yeah. I didn't uh, set these to landing gear, so you might want to do that, but raise legs. And there they go. has to go a bit steeper because of the low thrust weight ratio of the second stage, so keep that in mind. Technically, there's a visible pad uh, launch complex 36, which is where it's supposed to launch from, I think. But we need to actually set that up properly. I'm including the license in the mod, and that is the same license as I always use for it as uh, Creative Commons with Attribution, so. I have not put RCS on the first stage for it to control its recovery. That uh, I didn't really see in the pictures where the heck those are supposed to go, so. What I'd suggest is putting little pill-shaped RCS tanks on, you know, somewhere up here. And uh, attaching little RCS thrusters to those. So since we have 5,200 in the upper stage, we need to be going around, around 2,800 surface velocity would be fine. Basically take 8,000, well I'll switch to orbital velocity. Okay, so take 8,300, subtract out what we have in the upper stage. So we need to get to 3,000 100, let's say. This is just an estimate. Uh, I We have to... The, uh, the 8,300 takes into consideration the horrible thrust weight ratio of the upper stage, you see. Okay, and stop. Okay, separation. So th that had a little bit left, right? Uh, can we see? Uh, 2,400 should be enough to land on a barge. And ignition. I mean, that should be enough to slow down and land on the barge for sure. So, no problems there. And we continue. But we'll need to pitch up more. Hopefully I've reserved enough for orbit still. Despite the thrust weight ratio. And we should be able to separate the fairings. That's not separating the fairings. That's reversed. And off they go, very smooth and clean, cleanly. Yeah, basically the same fairings on the Atlas V and the Vulcan rockets. So <laughs> they're just bigger, seven meter diameter now. Okay, physical time warp. I don't know if the leaf texture and the other textures on the first stage are on both sides or not. Uh, I just put them on both sides just for the heck of it. So this was made for RO, uh, textures unlimited is recommended for getting the proper look. It does have a textures unlimited configuration on it. I might have overdone the pitch up. Yeah, definitely think I overdid it. 
Well, we got to orbit, so that's not a problem. Uh, RCS on. I don't know why the RCS doesn't show a separate display here for enabling the sailing. That's probably because it's a decoupler on. That's probably why. Because it's showing up as a decoupler instead. So just enable that otherwise. But turning prograde. It's actually a little white patch there that wasn't intended. Okay, let's see if the decoupling... So it comes with an automatic decoupler in this case. And this awkward camera change. Not a whole lot of decoupling force, unfortunately. But that tank is free now. Okay, well, it's off. No controller there. And uh, we can retrograde. Okay, and let's just go ahead and reignite to the orbit. And that's done. All right, so it will be disposed of. But there you have it. That is the New Glenn rocket as I have it right now. And numbers may change. Like I said, we didn't have the greatest amount of data available, but I based it on the the timing of the launch that they had in the payload user's guide. So that's the best we've got, I think. And the thrust and stuff we have otherwise. Uh, they did have the thrust of these engines in the pay, payload user's guide. They said in vacuum, the stage had 1,060 kilonewtons. So that's 530 each. So anyway, with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.